Now today, we're studying about the Spirit. They call it pneuma. It's a word that uh, pneumatology is the study of spiritual beings or phenomena. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you today. This is a strange truth that the Holy Ghost has shown me. How do you make a Christian? You have to have the anointing to be a Christian. Do you know that every Christian in the world today came from me? Every Christian came from me. You said, no, wait a minute, that's a big word there. Think about this. All you Holy Ghost people that was touched by God, you was in some dead church. Until I come with a word that said the Bible's an idol, the Bible's the mark of the beast, you was in captivity. See, now think about this. This is the way God does things. How do you make a Christian? How do you make a Christian? If you went to college to become a doctor and they put you in automobile mechanics, you would never become a doctor. See, you do not become a Christian unless you know these truths. I have the foundation teachings in me. God gave me this word and told me his voice would be heard again. A lot of people was out there struggling and they said, I didn't know the Bible was an idol. I didn't either. But now think about this. Every Christian that lives today, every Christian in history, come from Apostle Paul, Peter, James, Matthew, Philip, and all of the, uh, the apostles. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? Now think about this. I am the only person on YouTube, me and a few Holy Ghost people, that points you to the Spirit. Now what are you going to become if you hear a Baptist preach? You're going to become a Baptist. If Bisoff teaches you or Copeland, you're going to become a Bible. You're going to have faith in the Bible. You'll become a Mormon or a, a Jehovah's Witness or a Pentecostal or a pedophile Catholic. You cannot become a Christian unless someone ministers the Spirit and ministers the Word of God until you get the Word of God and you can't be a Christian. There are no Christians in the world today. You have to baptize yourself. God put the Holy Ghost in me and wrote the foundation. Say, I'll tell you the foundation teaching. Jesus is the Christ. He's the chief cornerstone. This is a stone the builders rejected. All of them line up on our Lord. He is the King. The next one is repent. Change from the flesh to the spirit. The next one is faith. Faith for you got faith in the Bible. See, I can put this on here and there'll be 40 to 11 of you, a dozen of you Bible worshipers that jump on here. You're crazy. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. You're a Bible worshiper. See, so you have faith in the Spirit. And then you have to be baptized. Now today you have to baptize yourself. You're buried with Jesus. Why was John the Baptist baptizing? To repentance. There's a change coming. It was going to be Holy Ghostal. God put His Spirit. I'm going to explain His Spirit to you in just a minute. All right, you've got to baptize yourself. In Jesus' name, you're buried with Jesus because you're giving up the life in the flesh. And then you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, when you accept this word, the Bible is the mark of the beast, I pray for you, and the angel will come by and touch you with the Holy Ghost and stir you up, and you know that God is in you. There's an angel preaching the gospel today. That's the only way we can get it out. You ain't got no people preaching because when you take this up, it's hard to live. All right, you baptize yourself, and then you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, you don't belong to God. And then he uses your body, like he's using my mouth today and my body. I present my body to Jesus. I'm not controlled by money. I'm not controlled by people. I'm not controlled by Bibles. I'm only controlled by the Holy Ghost. All right, and then, after that, you must believe there's a resurrection. If there's no resurrection, then there's no need to do all this. And then you have eternal judgment. You'll be judged for the deeds you do in your body, not the thoughts you think about doing, but the deeds you do. So you'll stand before your Creator. All right, now that's the foundation teaching. I can put you on the foundation teaching. Not another preacher in the world can do that because they go by the Bible. They're all churches. Check all churches. They're all built on the Bible. Now, how do you get, say you take a, a bucket of water out of the Mississippi River. Well, you got part of the Mississippi. When the Holy Ghost gets in you, and this is what I teach, Holy Ghost gets in your spirit, which is the, the pneuma, and it becomes part of you. Then he gives you power to overcome the flesh, and he becomes one with you. And I'm a wise master builder. I build you on the Spirit. It's pretty easy to become a Christian. It's just hard to live in this world that is a Christian. Too much persecution. Very few can do it. And you minister the Spirit. See, I'm ministering words to you you never heard before. Because I minister the Spirit to you. Most preachers minister the letter. See, Bisoff and all these uh, nuts get on there and they tell you some little words that 
said 2,000 years ago. They don't have the Spirit. They can't minister to you the Spirit. If you believe what I tell you, and you, you uh, listen to these words, and you pray to God, I'll pray for you, and God will send the Holy Ghost upon you. He'll send an angel by there, and you can become a Christian. Many of you start out when you're young, and you say, Brother, I was a Christian before I knew you. Yeah, you was touched by God. You can't be a Christian if you don't know the Bible's the mark of the beast. You cannot. You'll be in a church. And when you're in a church, you're in captivity. And when you're in captivity, you'll do what they say. What do you do on Sunday morning? You get up and go down to the church because you belong to them. See, I belong to God. The Holy Ghost gets in me and makes me a Christian. That's the only thing that makes you a Christian is the Holy Ghost. It's the pneuma. And so it's of the lungs. You see, you have, like you get pneumonia, you get it in your lungs, it'll kill you. But then the other thing, you can have blood diseases in your liver or something because you have two lives in you, the blood and the spirit. I teach you to be spiritual. They teach you to give your money to the church. That's fleshly. They're all fleshly. There's not one Christian that's teaching the gospel today except us few Holy Ghost people. And they just come into it because Jesus said, my voice will be heard again in the land. His voice was not being heard at all in the land. Not at all. You're hearing people quote scriptures. That's not no good. You've got to get the Holy Ghost in you and you've got to have prophecy in you. You can tell me, I used to have dreams and prophecy, but you was under some old dumb pastor reading the Bible to you. Don't tell me this stuff. I know this stuff. God sent me. I'm the only man of God that came forth with the Bibles and idol, and they run me out of this country. They run me out of this country twice. You cannot preach the Bibles and idol here in this country because the president swears in on the Bible. You was under the Bible, and as long as you're under the mark of the beast, you've got to overcome the mark of the beast before you can become a Christian. You can't be controlled by the devil and claim you're a Christian. When you're going to church, you can't claim you're a Christian. You're a Baptist or a Methodist or a pedophile Catholic or some Pentecostal that shouts around and says, come tie my tie like they're speaking in tongues. They don't have nothing but some emotional snake handling snake oil. That's all they got. Ain't got nothing. To make a Christian, you have to be made by God, God's son. Now, Apostle Paul said, I'm a wise master builder. I can make a Christian. You're looking at a man that can make a Christian. I can make a Christian. You say, how do you do that? I got the Word of God in me. I can come to a person, lay my hands on them, the Holy Ghost comes on them, and that's what makes them a Christian. <laughs> it's just that simple. Simple to make a Christian. It's hard for them to live it because grandma and grandpa get against them. They said, I've been in the Bible 40 years, and it's right. You know, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's just absolutely wrong. Now, pay attention to what I'm telling you. You cannot become a Christian listening to all these Bible teachers on YouTube or in these television programs. And you'll become a Bible worshiper. That's all you become. You can't be a Christian and a Baptist. A Christian is anointed. A Baptist is not anointed. They go by the Bible, which they call the Word of God. Now, let me show you this. This is the Bible. I don't put you in this. They put you in it because they say this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. This is not the Word of God. Now let me show you. Nobody can do this. Can your pastor do this? Your pastor can't do that. You see, I can do that. You know why? Because I'm anointed to do this. Now until all you little Holy Ghost people that helps me, some of you, and I love you very much, you're part of my family. You couldn't do this till I come along because you didn't even know to do it. See, they said... Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we haven't even heard that there be a Holy Ghost. So you didn't even hear that the Bible was the mark of the beast till I come along. So you see, this ain't nothing holy. Now here's what I want to show you. See all this up to this marker I got here? This is all Old Testament. And this is Old Testament too. This is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now so you, what you do, you do away with all of this. You see, you do away with all of this. Now get your pastor to do that. He can't do that because they kick him out of the church. <laughs> do this at your church. They'll kick you. An atheist won't even do it. You know, an atheist is just a closet Bible worshiper. You tell them to take the Bible down there and tear it up, and they can't do it because they're controlled by the Bible. Everybody's controlled by the Bible. Now, see, now I've got over here to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay? Now you say, well, that says New Testament. Well, you know what that is? That's a lie. That's the way Satan controls you, with lies. That is a lie right there. The New Testament, that's a lie. The, you know where the New Testament really starts for us? is when we get the Holy Ghost. And that's in the book of Acts. 
When we get the Holy Ghost, that means then we're regenerated. See, I teach you to get God in you and you become regenerated. And now here's what you got left. Here's where the book Acts starts. Now see what you got left? Just a little scotia bit. Poquito. That's, that's all you got left. And these men that wrote these letters was people that was under the law. Paul was a strong law man. Same with Peter and all of them. He wrote Romans and Galatians all about the law. The law. You don't need that. All you need is the Holy Ghost. Now you see, I'm the only one that teaches the Bible's the mark of the beast. You've got to come through this way. You've got to send for Peter. When an angel appeared to Cornelius, why didn't the angel just baptize him in the Holy Ghost? No, he said, send and get Peter. This way Jesus does things. He does it through people. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. You've got to come through me to get the Bible's the mark of the beast. I can make a Christian. I've made them before. It's easy to make them. Because God is very kind. He wants you. He loves you. If you've got a good heart, He'll give you the Holy Ghost. That's the beginning. Then you're tried. Then you're tested. And then you've got to give up your mama and your grandma. And sometimes your children. And sometimes you've got to give up your Bible. You've got to give up the church. And then you're regenerated. This is this new man. This one lady, she died in a car wreck. She went over in some trees and nobody couldn't see her. She died. She had a five-year-old son with her. And he was alive, but she died. But that little boy, he was five years old, and he told the story later. He said, there was a light around me all the time I was there. His mother was stayed there with him. That was her Numa. She went up beside the road and laid by the road naked, a, a, an image in the spirit to get people to see that there's a car wreck down. They couldn't even see it. Finally, an officer went down there and found the little boy. He'd been there five days, and he all, was almost dead, but they brought him back to life. And he said, there was a light around me all the time. That was his mama watching over him. And if you look real close around me, you'll see a light around me. You know why? Because my father sends angels to watch over me. I'm part of this pneuma. I'm part of the Holy Spirit. And you can't become a Christian without me. You just can't make it without me. You don't have the Word. The Word of God is the Bible's the mark of the beast. You say, I got it now and the Holy Ghost is in me. Then live it. And you're part of me. You're part of my family. We're one with Jesus Christ. All people came from Jesus. He started the new church, 120 of them, and then all the rest of them came from the apostles. You cannot be a Christian reading the Bible. If you have faith in the Bible, you're going to hell. You've got to have faith in the Spirit, in the pneuma. Father, we thank you for this truth. I know it's hard for people to understand and believe. It's hard for me even to believe, Holy Father, but I know it's true you spoke it to me, and I thank you for this truth. They cannot hear without a preacher. Thank you, Father. Gracias, Señor, for el poder para predicar el evangelico en el nombre de Jesús Cristo.